What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion 2020 video for you. So in the last video we talked a little bit about the new vegetation scattering tool. In today's video I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the new vegetation options that are contained inside of Twin Motion 2020. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there were a few things that were changed and adjusted in this version. I just kind of wanted to go through them and give you kind of a high level overview of these. If there's anything you want to hear more about, just leave a comment down below and I can let you know. But the first thing I wanted to point out is inside the vegetation library, they've gone through and they've completely revamped the tree library. So now you've got all of these different trees contained inside of your model that are different than the ones that were in here before. And these are much more detailed than the trees that were here before. So for example, let's pull a sweet birch into this model. And so if we take a look at this, you can see how this is a very detailed model, right down to you get some sunlight and some reflections off of the leaves. So you can see how there's actually light shining off of the leaves. So they've really kind of improved the quality of the vegetation contained inside of this, uh, inside of this release. And so if you look at these models, you can see that they're really detailed. Um, I'm not 100% sure if they come from the mega scans library or not, but if you zoom in, even the textures on the trees and everything else, they look really good. And uh, so one thing that's been added for most of the trees in here is they also have the ability to adjust their age. So you can adjust the age of the tree and you can see how these trees dynamically adjust from younger to older if you adjust this age slider. So you can either make these into like old growth large trees or newer trees as well. And there's a way you can adjust multiple different trees at once too. So let's say we made a couple copies of this, for example. And then we're going to select all of them by doing a control click. Notice that with all of these different trees selected, you can adjust the age of all of them by using this slider. One other thing to note is there's this button over here for growth. That means that later on when we use the function that adjusts, that adjusts all the trees in your model, if you turn this off for these trees, then these won't adjust with the rest of them inside of the model. So more on that in a bit, but just wanted to talk a little bit about this, uh, how they've changed the trees inside of Twin Motion. And so one thing I did want to point out as you go through these is there's a couple of them that are labeled as HD. So um, for example, this Weeping Willow is labeled as an HD tree. They haven't really talked about this very much, but best as I can tell, these seem to be like ultra high resolution objects. So like for example, this Weeping Willow tree looks really great in here, but it also seems a lot heavier from a geometry standpoint. So I think the notation of HD in here means that it has either more geometry or higher quality quality textures, it's going to render out better, but it's also going to be a little bit harder on your computer. So just be aware of that. But the quality of this tree is really high. And so in addition, they've done the same thing to some of their bushes and uh, grasses and flowers. So they've got new bushes in here and specifically they've got some objects in here like these different ferns. So these different ferns in here, um, they really reflect the light well. So for example, uh, if I was to let's go into my location settings and adjust this, you can see how the light reflecting off of these leaves is actually adjusting as we go dynamically. So you're actually getting like real reflection off of these objects in here. So they're really well mapped. They've got really high quality textures and they just look really good. So in addition to um, having new trees in here, there's also new bushes and ferns and things like that. And notice that your bushes and ferns also have an option to adjust the size in them. So you don't have to come in here and mess around with the scale tool. So let's say for example that we were to paint some of these in here. So if we were to use vegetation paint and let's go back to our bushes and let's just do a couple of these tropical palms just as an example. We'll go ahead and paint these with kind of a small diameter brush. But if you paint a bunch of these in here, so if you paint a bunch of these in here with the vegetation paint tool, um, you can select them like this. And for all of the objects that you've selected, when you paint them in, you can go over into your settings and you can adjust the size. So you can quickly adjust the size of any objects that you add with the paint tool. And I believe it's the same thing with the scatter tool. We'll mess around a little bit more with that in a bit. But notice that you now have the ability inside of the vegetation paint to adjust the size and also the density after the fact. So these tools have kind of been expanded to include this so that you can quickly make changes without having to go back and repaint things or anything like that. 
So now let's talk a little bit about the overall growth. So I've got a model in here, it's just a road, but let's say we wanted to add a forest to these areas on the side. And we talked a little bit about the uh, vegetation scatter tool before, but there's definitely the option here now with the new trees where you can actually create, and we'll go ahead and drag maybe the sweet, per the sweet birch, the pecan, and we'll go with the horse chestnut just for right now. But you can use this in order to place these objects just by clicking the scatter add and clicking on a surface. And what that'll do is that'll scatter add these objects in here without you having to make any changes or adjustments or anything like that. So it's really great for creating things like forests. And notice that you can do the same thing where you can do a shift click to select all of these. And you don't wanna be in scatter add mode to do this, but you can go into the settings and you can quickly adjust the age and growth of the trees in here um, of the objects that you've scattered. And so you can also use this vegetation scatter tool to scatter things like weeds and uh, plants. So let's say for example that I wanted a bunch of tall grass in here um, on the side of my road. So I could select different sets of tall grass, maybe some of this heather in here as well. And you can select these and add them quickly using the scatter add tool. So you can see how I can use this in order to add in all of this geometry. One thing to note about this that's pretty cool is this: there's a dynamic distance in here now. So even though I've placed these objects um, inside of my model, they're only showing up to a certain distance to minimize the effect on my processor or my graphics card. So if I go into preferences and I look under the fading of grass, you can see how there's a near a medium and a far. So if you set it to the near and click on OK, you can see how this only shows this grass and this stuff that we've scattered to this length. Um, alternatively, if we were to go in here and adjust the fading of grass to something like far, you're gonna see a lot more of it, but it's gonna be a lot harder on your processor and your computer. So you can set this where you can place all of this grass and it'll render out just fine, but it's not necessarily showing up real time, which is really reducing the load. Um, I can definitely not hear my computer spinning up the way that it used to when it was trying to render stuff like this based on these new settings. So they've also got a new dynamic resolution function, which uh, you can go into your preferences, quality, and dynamic resolution and click on OK. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust the resolution for different objects based on how close they are to your computer. So right there, just making that change, I could really hear a difference in how much my computer was working because at a certain distance, you can see how the detail level gets lower then closer to your computer. So over here, I can see individual leaves and stuff. Over here, it's rendered at a much lower resolution. So the dynamic resolution function is really great for keeping um, your computer from getting that huge load placed on it. And then the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is we talked a little bit about how you could use the vegetation scatter tool in order to adjust this forest. Um, you can also, under your settings, under weather, there's a growth option where you can adjust the growth of everything inside of your model. Notice how this, uh, this rendered out really slowly in here because I have that dynamic resolution turned on. So it's really a lessening the load on my computer, but you can see how you can adjust the uh, height of your forest in here just by making the adjustment to that overall growth. And one thing to note about that, and I'm probably gonna need to turn the dynamic resolution back off in order to show this. So if we turn off dynamic resolution, Let's say that I was to place a tree, like this sweet birch, and let's say we wanted this to be younger, so we wanted this to be a young growth tree. If I was to turn growth off, so like this, then if I was to come in here and I was to make an adjustment for the growth of the rest of the trees, you can see how all of the other trees are adjusting, but this one isn't because I turned growth off. So for individual objects, you can turn that growth on and off um, in order to lock some trees into a certain level of development. So that's where I'm going to end this video. I just wanted to make a quick video talking about some of the new vegetation options and also some of the different tools that are now contained inside of Twin Motion 2020. Leave a comment below. Let me know what feature you'd like to see a video on next, what you think about this new release. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.